Now on the bench today we've got ourselves a Yagi and it's a rather big Yagi. Uh, it's for 900 megahertz, it's not a TV uh, aerial, it's uh, a 900 megahertz cellular Yagi. This was sent in to me by uh, a subscriber. Uh, it sent me a couple of things actually and uh, I want to do a separate video on the other thing because it's something that I've been... Uh, I've wondered about for some time whether they do work but uh, he sent us this 900 megahertz Yagi thought it'd be nice to do uh, a quick test with this on the uh, test bench and also the uh, coax that comes with this we've got 10 meters of coax it does say on it that it is 50 ohms but I've just recently put a small um, water feature in my garden and it came with uh, uh, micro tubing for the water it's only a small thing in the garden and this feels just like that micro tubing as if it's hollow um, it doesn't feel substantial at all you know it, 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 it does it feels like a hollow tube so I want to also test this um, coax as well just to see how lossy it is uh, 900 megahertz is not as lossy as uh, 1900 megahertz for instance but you still have uh, a little bit of loss if uh, the coax is completely rubbish but before we take it over and test it I've got to change this uh, F connector here to something that uh, we actually use here in the lab this is no good but as for the uh, Yagi itself we've got uh, these three parasitic directors here um, main driven element Ooh, nice and big I mean uh, be interesting to see if there's a balance inside there if we can take a look um, I mean it's probably works at around 7 dB of gain with its uh, three parasitic elements here so it's not going to break any record although it looks big um, that's only because it's uh, for a uh, uh, you know not quite as high frequency it's frequency low down as you know as you move further down in the spectrum things get bigger but uh, yeah probably around 7 dB of gain no more than that I would have thought now I'm not holding out uh, any kind of hope for this coax I've had to uh, cut right back to try and get uh, some a decent amount of the outer braid so I can uh, crimp on this uh, connector here and it's just so wispy it's falling apart there's there's nothing of any substance there but uh, I will persevere and get the connector on and uh, should be interesting to measure how much loss is in this coax so it took a little bit of effort to get that uh, crimped on there there was just not a great deal of that braid to uh, latch onto but uh, we've got a good connection now and I think they had the same problem because it looks like to crimp it onto the uh, Yagi itself they've used a pair of pliers around here to crimp it but yeah let's give it a test so here's the antenna on the test bench then and uh, yes I have got it in a vise to hold it in place so let's have a look at the network analyzer so here we are on the network analyzer and here yeah, it's jumping up and down a little bit so uh, I have to keep still um, scanning from 400 megahertz over here up to 1200 megahertz here and I've just had a look on the underside of the antenna and it claims to work from 800 megahertz to 900 megahertz and it also claims to be 8 dB of gain so I wasn't far off with my estimate so moving the cursor we're at uh, 900 megahertz in this dip down here 800 megahertz is all the way over here so yeah it does work at uh, 800 megahertz but it's going to work better down here in this uh, dip itself so yeah one gigahertz there and 858 megahertz there so yeah it's about where it says it claims to be uh, it's going to work for the 900 megahertz at the cellular uh, frequency that uh, this uh, antenna was sold for but uh, yeah I'm more concerned about uh, what that coax is going to be like but yeah it's definitely a 900 megahertz antenna so I worked as expected on the network analyzer around that 900 megahertz mark and uh, yeah not much else to say about it really um, I want to get rid of this coax now because uh, it's getting a little bit unwieldy it's a bit difficult to get all this on the bench in one go so I'm going to cut it off here and add a second connector onto this so we can test how much uh, loss that this has got uh, later on in the video but uh, let's take a closer look at this Yagi first and there's some really professional uh, crimping going on there <laughs> 
And here's the main driven element. I mean, uh, generally it looks uh, well made. The bends on it are really, really nice. Um, we've got what, I did think it was potted in here, but it's not potted. I think what they've done is filled it uh, in with hot glue. There, you can see it better now. Filled it in with hot glue in there and just got their thumb and squished it in there. So yeah, sh we should be able to get that out and see what's going on. I've also got this heat shrink tubing on here. And I've got a feeling that we've got a balloon going on that's similar to the uh, Danettes, um, is it Turbo Tenor uh, Yagi? Uh, that's kind of got a uh, balloon that folds back on itself inside of the tubing of the main driven element. So let me see if I can get this hot glue out of here and uh, remove this heat shrink tubing. Give us a better idea. Now that uh, we can see uh, what's actually going off here, it's uh, really quite interesting. Uh, it is the same uh, design and balance as the Danette's uh, Turbo Tenor, which they claim to own, which uh, they don't. Um, this particular design is in one of my books that I've got. Uh, I think the book is from about 1974, 75, something like that. And this particular design is in that book. So, no, they don't own it, but uh, it is a very nice uh, design and works really well. So, basically, the way this works is all of this is ground. The coax comes in here, uh, the outer braid of the coax, the ground is crimped on here, makes contact with all of the metal that you see, everything, this uh, base and the tubing. And the inner core of the coax uh, that uh, you can see there, that's uh, connected to a length of uh, coax that's had the outer braid stripped away. So we've just got the dielectric like this one here. We've just got the dielectric and the inner core just to uh, stop it from grounding itself onto uh, this side of the tubing. And that comes around, loops around on the inside and is soldered onto this side of the driven element, this side of the tubing here. Now as far as this design goes, it is a really, really nice design and works really, really well. I've used it in the past. I think I've made a couple of videos where I've uh, used this particular design, although I've moved on from this. I do prefer uh, this kind of design now, which uh, again has a built-in balance. It is a shorted design, just like uh, this one here. I just find this a little bit easier to make, to be honest with you, but um, yeah, it's fine. I mean, I mean the... The uh, Yagi itself, let me bring the Yagi in, let me zoom out a little bit, I mean the Yagi itself, uh, you can't knock it and if uh, it had quality coax, um, it, it, would be, it would be a really nice uh, piece of equipment, I mean this to buy on its own on eBay uh, goes for around £12 to £18, I mean you, honestly you could not build this uh, for that kind of money um, you know if you were to get the aluminium in it would cost you more to build this than it would be to buy this and they always let themselves down with the cheap coax uh, as I said that coax has got 50 ohms written on it but it's always the coax that lets these things down and we'll take a look at the coax in a minute but real uh, low loss coax is expensive so when you see something like this and they're advertising it with uh, 10 meters 15 meters 25 meters and they're only charging around 15 pounds for the uh, yagi and the coax you just know the coax is going, not going to be up to standard because uh, 15 meters of low loss coax you can expect to pay somewhere around the region of 50 pounds for that you know you can get it a bit cheaper if you're lucky sometimes but it really is expensive stuff so you know a really nice yagi and it does work well we've seen it um, on the network analyzer with a really uh, good solid design of driven element with combined ballon but let's sit down with the coax so with that let's go and take a look at the coax so this is the uh, setup then I've got the coax attached to my sweep generator which I'm currently using on CW so I'm producing a 900 megahertz signal at 16 dB I'm using this one because this one is extremely accurate if it says it's putting out 16 dB it's uh, bang on 16 dB I do have another signal generator but unfortunately it needs calibrating and it's out by a, a dB or two but uh, 
we're putting out the signal there into one end of the coax the other end of the coax is going into my uh, power sensor there and that's outputting on the uh, boot and power meter so let me just zoom in so we can see the numbers so as you can see on the power meter we're registering just over 8 dBm so that's a 16 dBm signal going into the coax and by the time it gets to the end it's only outputting half of its power so it's losing half of the power that's being fed into one end and remember this is um, 10 meters of coax um, it's not low loss coax although at 900 uh, megahertz it's not as bad as the loss that we'll see if we go up in frequency but uh, yeah half the half of the power that we're putting in we're actually losing through the coax and this is uh, sold with one of those um, little uh, amplifiers that you can get for cellular networks you can buy them pretty cheaply off uh, a lot of the places eBay Banggood that sort of thing and uh, it's really interesting that if you're going to use this coax with that uh, power amplifier the power amplifier allegedly boosts the signal by 25 dB so you're kind of wasting your time if you're going to use your amplifier with this coax it kind of negates any gains that you might get with that amplifier and as I said it only gets worse as you go up in uh, frequency so at the minute I'm putting in a, uh, a signal of uh, 1800 megahertz at 16 dBm and if we look at the power meter we're only getting 2.38 of a dB through that uh, coax we're losing a lot of energy through that coax so as I said further up you go in frequency the worse the loss gets so what is uh, actually a nice uh, little Yagi um, it says 8 dB on here but I would give it uh, 7 dB of gain <sighs> nicely designed with a very nice driven element and ballon is let down by uh, basically crappy coax I mean uh, be careful um, the coax if you're going to do a run like that uh, 10 meters and over the most expensive thing you're going to have to buy is uh, some decent coax I mean for 900 megahertz it doesn't have to be super low loss it's not going to be that expensive but when you start going over 1 gigahertz quickly your coax is going to be your most expensive part of uh, any uh, setup like this it's you just can't get away with cheap coax and as I said it, it is a nice Yagi it performs at 900 megahertz nicely designed and uh, everything else just let down with the coax so I hope you enjoyed this video taking a look a uh, quick look at this uh, Yagi and its coax and uh, if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up comments or questions drop them below I'll do my uh, best to answer them and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one